What about mummies? Well, they're big and strong and completely reek. But other than that, you got me. Well, if we're gonna hang out with the mummy, we need to find out more about him. I know just the guy who can tell us everything. That would be me, I guess. In this series of videos, we're looking at every incarnation of the mummy in movies. And while many eras can be considered classic or exotic or blockbusters, one thing is undeniable. There is one group, one demographic, keeping this monster alive for generations. And without their interest, many mummies would never have seen the light of day. Kids. Filthy, little disease-spreading, emotionally volatile, wonderfully irreplaceable progeny that remind you of what wonder feels like. I'm going to be covering all of the standout children's movies featuring the mummy as the main menace, and there's no sense in wasting time, so let's get to it. Now, one of the first thoughts in my head, or images, when I thought of children's mummies is the cover to Tintin and Cigar of the Pharaohs. I had no reason to put these numbers together before now, but it makes total sense that Tintin creator Hergé would be fascinated with mummies. Cigar of the Pharaohs was originally published in 1932, the same year the Boris Karloff Universal Classic movie was released. Hergé would have been 25 at the time, and he would have been 15 when they discovered King Tut's tomb, and he literally lived through one of the most prestigious archaeological discoveries of all time during some of the most formative of years of his life. The entire excavation of Tutankhamun is noteworthy for its role in building the myth of the mummy. Egyptians were gaining some independence from the British, and this excavation was something of a sore spot or point of tension. So when one of the archaeologists died from an infection, we started to see the idea of curses and superstition take hold. In reality, there was a work stoppage until an agreement was reached to let the Museum of Cairo get nearly all of the discoveries. The entire endeavor took many years and didn't finish until 1932. Hergé himself has used mummies and indigenous curses in a couple of his books. Prisoners of the Sun have Incan mummies, and in the story that we're here to discuss, Cigars of the Pharaohs, the cover image that has stuck itself in my mind when I think about children's mummies from that book, well, well that and the DuckTales opener. In Cigars of the Pharaohs, there is no living mummy aside from these archaeologists who get mummified and it's a comic rather than a movie, but Nilvana animated almost all the Tintin graphic paper adventures onto celluloid in the animated adventures of Tintin, and these stories are all incredibly accurate to the volumes they adapt. I just wanted to include this TV series here because the Tintin backstory of the comics and Hergé's age really show how influential and popular the ancient Egyptian world had become in the 20s and 30s, and how the mummy as a movie monster really derives from these roots in all different avenues, whether comics, novels, or TV and movies. This all builds up the mummy in the public conscience and allows it to be fertile ground for children of all generations. Most animated series will feature a mummy sooner or later, whether it's Scooby-Doo or Mumra from Thundercats. The mummy is a children's favorite, so let's look at which movies got made for kids. I have a feeling there's a bunch of people who really wanted me to start with the Monster Squad, so let's do that right now. The Monster Squad in 1987 has a really great mummy. All the monsters are modeled or meant to evoke the Universal Monsters, and they did the mummy really well, but he isn't the main focus of the movie, nor does he have any motivation or dimension to him. But he does have a great demise. <laughs> Monster Squad is a truly beloved and cult phenomenon. It even has its own documentary titled Wolfman's Got Nards, almost more about the fandom of the movie than the movie itself. Fred Decker is the man behind the movie who also wrote one of my favorite movies of all time, House. He also directed an underrated gem called Night of the Creeps, just a little fun if you want to look that one up. <laughs> Monster Mash in 1995. So there's a song that we all know called the Monster Mash. It was a graveyard smash. Uh, but sadly for everyone, there's also a made-for-TV movie from 1995 called Monster Mash that drones on for an hour and 20 minutes too long and stars Candace Cameron from Full House while Full House is still filming. It's a musical with a bunch of lesser mashes. It has a mummy, an Elvis mummy. It's not a main feature of the film, but... I just know somebody grew up watching this and would appreciate me including it, so 
pelvis mummy. Ninety-seven under wraps. Okay, the closest you're going to get to Monster Squad is, well, it's the Goonies. But the Goonies doesn't have a mummy. So if a mummy was the prerequisite, then the closest you're going to get to Monster Squad is under wraps. God, that, that wasn't a good segue at all. Let's try that again. Disney took a swing at the old cartouche in 1997 with their made-for-TV but very much beloved by some goofy mummy movie called Under Wraps. Three kids find a mummy in a neighbor's basement and it awakens and they befriend him, call him Harold, and then try to keep him out of trouble until they can get him back to sleep. The mummy is constantly mugging and it kept reminding me of Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. Honey, it's not polite to stare. Now, I told you, some people are just born special. Well, this guy is really special. <laughs> it's mostly, no, it's all cheap laughs. This is for little kids. It has a earnest goes to camp level of humor. It's not without its cheesy charms, but I think you had to be there to really get it. But the movie garnered enough sentimentality for Disney to remake it in 2021 and a sequel to that remake in 2022. The remake is surprisingly an almost scene-for-scene -scene remake. Fans of the original should be happy to watch this with their kids. But I actually enjoyed the sequel even more. Good on Disney for digging up this relic from their vaults and doing it justice, really. Maybe now we'll get that Tron Legacy sequel? Hotel Transylvania 1, 2, 3, and 4. I got the fingers right, right? Adam Sandler's computer animated monster movies about a hotel for monsters run by Dracula does feature a mummy as a character, but just not really the main focus. He's voiced by CeeLo Green and then in the sequels by Keegan Key, and the character of Murray, that's his name, depicts a plus-sized mummy, which isn't common in the arena of desiccated undead remains. All three movies are wildly successful, helped by a massive ensemble of stars that puts the Expendables cast list to shame. Rather than wax poetic on the merits, let me give you a collective cast list and then we can move on to a movie that's pretty much the total opposite. We got Sandler, Spade, Keegan Key, Buscemi, Kevin James, Molly Shannon, John Lovitz, Fran Drescher, Andy Samberg, Selena Gomez, Chris Parnell, Mel Brooks, Nick Offerman, Dana Carvey, Katherine Hahn, Jim Gaffigan, Tara Strong, right? It's like I just read off the guest list of four seasons of Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today, I'm joined by The Mummy. <laughs> Another CG animated movie called Monster Family came out in 2017. It also features a mummy type character, sort of. The Mummy is based on a children's book called Happy Family about a family who wants to go to a monster costume party and try and get costumes, but accidentally call the real Dracula instead of the costume rental place, and then lonely Dracula decides he will marry this woman on the other side of the phone after 30 seconds of conversation, and they get cursed by Baba Yaga and turned into monsters. Mom's a vampire, dad's a Frankenstein, son's a werewolf, and the daughter is a mummy. It's not a good movie. Every situation is totally contrived, the humor only rises to the level of cute at its best, but generally fails to connect, like some chatbot wrote the script, so the writing didn't help. But the directing also feels off, like the choices being made or how the scenes are paced doesn't flow naturally and feels very forced. And then, while I think the strength of the film is in the modeling, everything looks really nice and still frames are colorful and crisp, the actual animation of the characters feels stock and simplistic, with the exception of the Baba Yaga witch, who was pretty great right down to the wiry hairs on her chin. I don't really like slagging movies, I don't believe people intend to make bad movies, but I also don't want to lead anyone astray, and my personal feelings aside, critically it's garnered gener generally unfavorable reviews, at best calling it generic, and commercially it failed massively costing like 40 million and making like 8 million. What's most interesting is actually that it got a sequel made in 2021, and it also failed spectacularly. Maybe 
even worse. It boasts a few names like Nick Frost or Jason Isaacs and the voice talent, but I have to imagine this British-German co-production was more of a tax shelter or an incentive program loophole than a successful enterprise. The sequel looks like they just took the assets they had from the first and put together an even shoddier animation team, and there was just no justifying the sequel in any sense that I can understand. Also, uh, we're going to give a quick shout out to The Night at the Museum, 1, 2, and 3. All three movies feature a sort of mummy. They are Egyptian figures as wax, 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 as wax statues come to life. There's an Egyptian tablet at the heart of all three films that is the source of magic that brings everything in the museum to life, but no real classic mummy. There's also a recent Spanish production, Computer Animated, which is inventive for the genre of mummy movies. This is about three mummies who live in a city of the dead, but come up to the modern world to get back an ancient ceremonial ring. I particularly like the crocodile mummy. It was very cute. The characters have human, non-rotten faces, but pretty unique designs. It's just not that funny. More of a mid-tier adventure movie with some fresh ideas I'd never seen before in mummy movies otherwise. I, I just think the expectation of audiences attending a movie called Mummies is to see mummies and not challenge my concept of what mummies are or could be, but I'm okay with that. There is no end to the list of children's movies and TV series to feature a rag and bone man as the villain, but hopefully I've covered all the main examples that would matter to most people. If I missed any you think are worth watching, I do check the comments and I'd love to hear what you think.